Hey, deserving listeners, Love is Blind, season three. Let's watch. Matt and Colleen. Guys, <laughs> congratulations. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we? we're really good. I think the reason that I mean, it is so up and down, I mean, you, you saw yeah. it, you know, it is yeah. way up and down, but it's because we both take it incredibly seriously. So that's why a lot of the emotions would go up and I don't know, but there's been some body language uh, issues with Matt and Colleen. I dislike when people on YouTube even will make these egregious claims about being able to read people's minds based on body language. There's no way to do that. Imagine if we could, <laughs> we'd be able to catch every criminal. We wouldn't have to have trials. We just need a body language expert to read someone's mind based on eye movements and body language, which is absurd. Having said that, <laughs> there has been, even during, and I didn't comment on it back then, but I'm seeing a little bit more of it now. During, during the ceremony, Colleen, the way that she said yes, the way that she said I do, it seemed, and I think I said this, it seemed strained, right? And since they've been at the reunion, you know, the body language, he's kind of enveloping her. It's, you know, it's not a terrible thing. She has her hand on his thigh. But the way she talks, she's not talking like Alexa. Let's just put it that way. She's not even talking like Raven is. There's a kind of a, a scared look in her eye or something. Now, I don't know if I'm just reading into it because of the way that Matt behaved and the way that went down and the way Colleen was like, oh, God, oh, my God, what's happening? So... I don't know if it's just her demeanor. I'm reading into it. I don't know. I'm guessing I'm wrong because what do I know about their relationship? I mean, their relationship is a billion times more complicated and nuanced than what we've seen on the show. But I don't know. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we? we're really good. I think the reason that, I mean, it is so up and down. I mean, you, you saw yeah. it, you know, it is yeah. way up and down, but it's because we both take it incredibly seriously. So that's why a lot of the emotions would go up and down. You know, you saw me kind of getting upset every now and then, you know, but it's all, I mean, it's all real. It's all legitimate emotion. That's Okay. I, I would love to hear him say something more along the lines of, I have a problem with oversensitivity to rejection and betrayal and cheating based on my past relationships, which makes me overconvinced that things are happening that are not happening. And then I deal with it in this pretty aggressive way, intimidating way, belittling way. I can't imagine him saying that, but something in that direction. A lot of the things he says, he's saying the we part of it, like we both have all these issues and, you know, there's normal ups and downs of really, you know, it was, it was volatile, essentially. We were volatile. I'd much rather hear, have him say something where he recognizes what he was doing and how destructive his behavior was, and if it continues, will be. Just coming from the pressurized situation, you know? We were grateful that we had some sort of conflict to overcome mm -hmm. because we weren't great at communicating a conflict, but it made us realize that's something that we had to work on, and we continued to work on that, and we still continue to work on yeah. that. Yeah, and not to say Colleen didn't need some work on her end as well. Uh, I, I, she's not to blame for his belittling and aggressive language towards her, but, and I know, and don't get me wrong, there's much more aggressive language. You know, think about when I was reacting to Amaranth and that whole thing on YouTube, that at least the way it looked was way more in line with the kind of upper end verbal abuse that I will see, which was not what I saw from Matt. But, you know, there's a spectrum. And for Colleen, what maybe she's referring to, which I would agree with that she needs to work on, is to be more leaning in and to be more wordy, right? Because she would go on her back heels. Now, if you're being attacked and belittled and made to feel small and made to feel scared, it makes sense to be on your back heels. But I think that she would even say that she avoids feelings and you know, that that's just not going to go very well, typically, in a relationship. So I think she's learning how to open up and how to be more forward, how to be more communicative. So I think that's what she's referring to. So yeah. has it been since? Has it been a roller coaster, or have you guys kind of settled into married life? I mean, we definitely dealt with a few just little day-to-day -day arguments and stuff like that. Okay, so normally I'd be like, okay, little day-to-day -day arguments, but 
when I hear that, given that Matt has basically been framing the, you know, what we saw as similar, that leads me to speculate that it sounds like more than a couple. It sounds like maybe a number of moments, which is unpleasant to think about. A roller coaster? Or have you guys kind of settled into married life? I mean, we definitely dealt with a few just little day-to-day -day arguments and stuff like that. Well, I mean, it's it's a... And then her body language. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to know. But if I had them as a couple, I would definitely meet with them alone so that I could help her to feel safe to tell me what's happening. And I would ask her direct questions as to if she felt safe. Does she feel able to talk? Does she feel like she can push back or get distance? when he gets upset what's it like when he gets upset what is what does he say do you feel belittled do you feel small do you feel like you're walking on eggshells you know th those kinds of questions but i don't know i i really i just don't know it's a big thing when you sh share a home with somebody yeah. and all the issues that come along with that i mean yeah. it's it's you know you it doesn't throw your love into question but right. there are life adjustments that have to happen you know sure. have to happen have you guys experienced that yeah so we uh we actually another element is that he keeps talking over her and for her and that body language again and hers and i don't know I, I i don't again i'm probably just reading into it yeah we're very much on the same page yeah was we, this like you both went i don't want to i don't want to great we don't have to give up our places or were, was one of you kind of leading the well, logistics wise and money wise we weren't there as soon as we were done with as soon as the wedding the next day we like we weren't money wise ready to give up on our leases like we weren't yeah, I'm guessing that a lot of viewers will look sideways at that. I don't know if you caught that, but they don't live together. They're married, but they don't live together yet. And that's fine. I've treated many couples, particularly older couples, who don't live together. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's unusual, culturally speaking. Uh, along these lines, there are couples that I work with that don't sleep together. They don't sleep in the same room for various reasons. They're on different schedules, snoring. There's a lot of different reasons as to why that would be different temperature preferences or something. And that can be an issue for some people. Some people really bond when they sleep together, the routines, the just knowing that the person is there, that kind of thing, living together similarly. But it's certainly not a major factor in the satisfaction and longevity of a relationship. There are much more important factors like loving each other, <laughs> being attracted to each other, uh, sharing each other's values, uh, communicating your hurt feelings and your rejected, scared feelings to each other without being aggressive and hostile and accusatory, being emotionally aware, being differentiated, talking things through, giving each other benefit of the doubt. All those things are much more important than the kind of superficial markers of marriage. So they're not living together. Now, if we go down the speculative route that something is amiss in this relationship, she might be preventing them moving in together because she doesn't feel quite good in the relationship yet. I don't know. You also kind of see in the one time where she's actually explaining things is when it comes to this question. And I don't know if I'm just reading into it, but I wouldn't be surprised if Matt is like, I want to live together. And she's just like, I'm not ready for that yet. Wise, we weren't there as soon as we were done with as soon as the wedding, the next day, we like we weren't money wise ready to give up on our leases. Like we weren't there yet. I guess I'm trying to understand that because yeah. normally when you combine one rent, that seems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who knows? I, they could have been locked in on a lease. Who knows? There there could be a variety of reasons. But you know, it's a good question. Let's see what they say. Well, so one of us would have had to cancel one of our leases if we wanted to move in with the other yeah. one. Yeah, and so... I was with roommates, so I would have screwed over some people. So it very complicated kind of situation but you know we got married i mean i think most people would say that doesn't make a lot of logical sense because if you have to pay for these two things anyway all right but you can still live together right it's not like for her she and she lives with roommates too so usually you'd prefer not to right if you don't have to so well, do you rotate like are we one week at her place, one well, week yeah, at your and place? That, like, and that's the thing. We don't have a central address right now, but we stay together seven days out of the week. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so we that's either... Monday, laundry day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a plan. In a couple months, we uh, made sure our leases line up the okay. same amount. Oh, so they do live together, it sounds like. <laughs> Wait, what? They said they don't live together, but they do live together seven days a week except for laundry day. Huh? 
<laughs> all the time. I'm not pregnant. Yeah, oh, yeah we just did a shot. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. Um, but I do want to say, like, watching it, um, I'm a lot nicer of a person, I think, than I, I, I think I'm a little bit more self-critical, like, looking at it. I feel like he's so, like, expressive with his love, and I'm over, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, I kind of noticed that, actually. Uh, I, I didn't think she was particularly withholding. I, I thought that she managed somehow to <laughs> communicate to him that she loved him and cared about and she's exaggerating for effect but I did kind of note that and I did the way I interpreted it actually was that she was uh, in the beginning when they first emerged from the pods she was just a little reserved like are, are you for real is this for real and, and I think her way of dealing with that was to kind of just shut down a little bit or I don't know act like nothing's bothering her when inside she's Roiling, boiling over with anxiety and fears and stuff, you know, just that like I'm okay, everything's fine, uh huh, really that 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 demeanor. I mean, I'm exaggerating for effect as well, but it just kind of looked that way to me. But it is interesting to think about for y'all if you had your life recorded and then edited in a certain way, and then you watch it. There are things that I'm guessing all of us would learn. Um, one of the things that I recommend people do, if uh, you can do it under controlled cir circumstances, is to do that, is to record yourself when and to watch it back. There are a lot of different venues where that would be helpful. Therapists, for example, we, and I require my supervisees to do this, is to film themselves as they are conducting therapy and then watch it back. Because there's, like for instance, for me, I learned that as a therapist, I, th I th feel like I'm open emotionally and I feel like I'm listening intently but if you look at if you looked at my body language when I was a, a novice therapist I didn't look that way I looked like I was kind of crunched up and you know and there's a lot of different rules about how you're supposed to be body language wise as a therapist which I find to be silly and reductive but but I did look like I was I, I looked at myself as I was in session I'm like stop it like show some facial expressions or something like nod your head or smile or not don't have that scowl on your face or so, so it, it was helpful to me to, to learn that and it, i wouldn't have known because if i just did a, a, an inventory while and i did as a therapist i would say yeah i'm open i you know I, I would have this idea of the way i looked it was not the way i looked and that can be really shocking because it stands to reason right because we're not outside of us looking at us but i think a lot of us have this delusion that somehow the way we think we look or, and come across to people is the way we're, or the way we intend on coming across to people is the way we come across. <laughs> Just as an analogy to this is when I was young, my mom, there's this famous story in my family. I'm like two or something, three, four. And my mom is trying to get me to smile for the camera. And, and the whole family or all the all of us kids. And so my mom's like, okay, everyone smile. And everyone's smiling except for me. And my mom's like, you know, little Kirk, smile, smile. And I'm not smiling and my mom's like, Kirk, you're not, why aren't you smiling? And, and I said, apparently, because I don't remember this, but my family does, where I said, I'm smiling on the inside. <laughs> and uh, I could see myself thinking that, right? Like, well, I feel like I'm smiling. Am I not smiling? So we can smile on the inside and not smile on the outside. So sometimes, particularly for people with a certain demeanor, a certain reserved demeanor, it's important to know. And for her, I think she she felt on the inside like she was being expressive. But then when she watches herself, she's like, oh, <laughs> what? Now, now, another application of this is to record yourself having conflict with your partner because you have to sometimes do this under careful circumstances because some bad things can happen. You might want to get a therapist to help you with it. But the benefit from it is is large because the, the way you're coming across in, in conflict when you're fighting with your partner, I guarantee you, you think you're being reasonable and your tone is good. You listen back to it a few days later, you will probably hear all sorts of problems in your tone, the words you used, and you'll cringe. You're just like, did I say that? Oh my God, no wonder you yell at, yell back at me <laughs> or no wonder you, you walked off and slammed the door. I mean, listen to me. That's awful. It's really, it's, it's hard to face sometimes. That's why you want to have a therapist sometimes to do it. Uh, like I, there is, there was a lot of moments where I do love him very much. I, it's just not anything I've ever grown up with. Um, my family is very sarcastic and our love. We're never just, you know, I'm proud of you. Like I love, it's just not how we are. 
Um, and there- yeah, that's interesting, too. I, I think I was suspecting that as well, that she comes from a family or a friend group where there's a certain way of being around vulnerability and not being that way, right? And so she's talking about that. And, and it's great that she can see that, admit it, apologize to her husband. Say, I'm so sorry that I was giving you this like thing in my family and uh, I feel so bad that I wasn't reciprocating. I, I feel horrible. You know, it's good. Seems like Brennan is cool with it. All right. Well, that is it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.